Here we are at Motor Lambic Original with Jean, who runs Motor Lambic Original and also Motor Lambic Fontinas. And he's also the co-organizer of the Brussels Beer Festival. Now we've heard that this could be the final edition. Uh, what do you think, uh, or a final edition in this format? Can you tell us what's going on, Jean? Uh, we started in uh, about preparing the first Brussels Beer Fest started nine years ago. And uh, our will was to put again Brussels as a craft beer place on the map. So we couldn't do it like a closed festival like Mikeller or uh, Billy's in Antwerp where people are just spending four or five hours. Our goal was to have something public. So it's more random. You don't know what you will get. The first edition, we had a crazy atmosphere. Volunteers were super happy. Brewers were super happy. People that came were super happy. But for us, in financial term, it was a drama. <laughs> so at the end of the festival, we lost a shitload of money. And we said, at the end, so far, we had 2,500 people coming. We lost 10 euro per guest. That's not that bad for having a nice time. Years after years, the, the festival grew up till over 6,000 people pre-COVID. Then we said, okay, at the end, we'll finish at 10,000 people with an open festival and we'll find our financial balance. Then we have a small thing called COVID and it smashed up all the business model in our industry and for the festival. So we have to rethink about the model and when we were able to organize it again last year, we did again a super nice edition. We had the finance, financial balance, so festival is okay. But the mood is not great for the beer at the moment, and it's time to change the size of the festival. For us, it's about 100 professional brewers and craftsmen from food industry, cheese, meat, uh, spicy sauce, vinegar, bread, coffee that are coming, plus all the brewers, cider makers. It's 150 volunteers. It's way too much work. We can no longer handle first the risk because every year, every year we have absolutely no idea if it's gonna be a success. Success about having a good time, always. The underline of the festival is the crossroads of beers and friends. So we'll have good beers, we'll have good friends. But the effort to handle that kind of festival, that side of festival, it's way too much for us. So that's why we call it the last edition in that format. We're gonna do it again, but probably smaller, more relaxed, one or two food truck, music, 10, 15 breweries, easier. The time is for smaller edition, at least. This is what we think. We cannot spend a few hundred hours, and if you count the volunteers, thousand hours a year to organize a large two days festival. So that's why we said, this is the last edition. It's the last edition at Tour Taxi. This is the last edition with 30 breweries from all over Europe. So we're gonna do it. This year? I, it's about... I don't know. Oh, you don't know. 25, 30. Okay, 20, uh, we have 52, 54. Also, we have to change. Before, we had, for example, Canadian breweries. Yeah. We have four Canadian breweries coming over. Yeah. But the cost for a brewery now, it's too expensive. Yeah. So now, we have a good friend, Patrick from Vice Versa in Montreal, that is handling six different Canadian breweries. Okay. For them, it's not as expensive. They want to come private, have fun at the festival, see their friends, yes. They don't have to spend five, ten thousand dollars to attend the festival to sell 300 liters of beers. That's 
a nonsense in the past COVID beer world. Before COVID, it was 30% growth everywhere. Now, most breweries are happy if from one year to the other one, they do the same business. So, another time, less money in the beer world, customers, the prices went up, customers are still following, but it's a little bit harder for everyone. So we have to change the model. We have to change to have something still nice, still a nice connection, but maybe smaller, maybe two small edition instead of one large. So anyway, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Volunteers, we have over 90% of the volunteers that are coming back from oh, one year to the other one. Mm -hmm. A lot of breweries are super happy to come. We'll have good beers, good cider, good bread, good meat, good cheese. Everything's going to be crazy. But for us now, it's time to pass to something different. That you can handle and that's sustainable. Yeah, sustainable. And uh, then we can build in the street to have a nice party, have fun. And uh, so smaller festival is probably a part of our new world. Yeah, because it's one of my uh, favorite festivals. You've got a joyous feeling there, especially at the end. Uh, everybody is really, it's not so much a partying. They're really happy. It's kind of like a way to get into the winter. It's kind of like, a, to me, it's like a transition from the summer Yay, end to summer, and let's continue with the regular beer festival. So I always get a good feeling from that festival. And we, we never, we always had a great atmosphere during the festival because we are putting good condition. Someone asked me, why do you have a really nice catering for the volunteers and the brewers? Because when you have a break as a brewer, you spend hours dealing with customers. When you are off, you don't want to have junk food. You have a real cooked meal. You sit, spend half an hour, 45 minutes with other brewers, friends, and you have good food. But it has a cost. We are cleaning the glasses because It makes me more than sad, angry, when I see dirty glasses with the smell of 10 different beers, and then someone give his art, his work, his passion in a dirty glass. But cleaning 80,000 glasses during the weekend, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. We did it. Cleaning everything, having a nice atmosphere, in a nice venue, because Touré Taxi is a 125, 130 years old building with a lot of history, the walls, everything is beautiful. Having plants, having small details makes that we always had a great atmosphere. That's probably the best part of Brussels Beer Fest. No drama, just beers, friends and good times. Are you a bit uh, sad that you've had to make this decision or? Super happy. <laughs> it's a relief oh, yeah? for us. Yeah, the, the weight on, on our shoulder is too heavy. Uh, I'm not retired yet, so I still have uh, another job. And uh, running that kind and that size of festival is a full time job. You need six months full time and I don't have the time to organize it. So, uh, yeah, super happy and also super happy because we know that we'll have something else after. Different, but we'll try to keep the atmosphere and the good mood. Uh, talking in general about the state, you know, we've seen some festivals, we've seen Zeit Zitos go by the way. We've seen the Ghent uh, Beer Club, they're unable to hold their festival due to, I guess they have a dispute or couldn't find a venue, it was rented out to them. Uh, what do you, in general, see as the fate of beer festivals in Belgium? 
Yeah, it's uh, the way the B word is evolving. Forced us, forced us to choose another path. That's why it's the last edition. Everyone, brewers, publican, restaurant owner, shop owner, we all have to think about a new model because the old word is gone. Before, before the, the, the COVID, when you had released, you, had, you often had like lines. It's over. It's over. Yeah, you still have a couple of breweries with lines, but it's over. So we just have to think. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just different. We have to adapt. I started working here 20 years ago when the only bitter beer was Double X Bitter and Taras Bulba in Belgium. 20 years ago, we had no IPAs and it was impossible to sell foreign beers. And I will always remember the chief of, my congreg of our congregation of the publicans. It's Stenne from Akurat in Stockholm. He told me the grass is always greener elsewhere. At this time, I was envying other countries to have people wanting IPA. And now I have young customers like asking for a milkshake IPA that looks like rain juice and that has no bitterness. For God's sake, an IPA is fucking something bitter. We made bitter beer on opposition to the industries that we're making tasteless and beers without character. That's how IPA was born. Now that IPA has became a common brand, it has to be acceptable for everyone. IPA becomes something with fucking lactose and enhanced fruity flavor. That's not an IPA, that looks like an orange juice. If you want a smoothie, you go in a coffee bar. If you want lactose, you get a milkshake. If you want pineapple, you get a pineapple. <laughs> Not an IPA, but it's a part of the world. Yes. So, it's a part of the new world. And somewhere, the B word gets lost, and it's a new phase when we need to reorganize, we need to change things, and we need to come back to the roots. Basic things, have fun, making good beers, and make people enjoying good and craft beers. And you cannot make beers for everyone. You cannot make a beer that will please everyone. If you make a milkshake IPA, you will please a lot of customers. But not, not all stupid publican as I am. So it's never 100%. So make milkshake IPA for the young customers, they don't want any bitterness and honey's fruity flavor and make real IPA for the people that want to drink bitter beers. How have you adjusted here at your two bars and what have you seen the changes? I remember two years ago you were telling me you were trying to think of a new concept of how to... Yeah, it's... Um, of course, we are getting back to local uh, breweries, yeah. of course, because uh, shipping costs and the price to import beers is too expensive. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I don't want to put crazy prices on the beer. And again, I think that having the last fancy brewery from the middle of nowhere, customers, they don't give a shit about it. They just want to have good beers at a decent price. That's it. So we have to adjust the selection. We have to come back to the roots, more simple, taking care of customers, make sure they have fun, they have a nice service, and spend a good time. That's it. Back to the basics. 20 years ago, I had no beer gigs. 20 years later, I no longer have beer gigs. So that part is over for me.
it's another word. We are following the path of the wine, and the wine is, has changed a lot, but we, we had to go to that really difficult time. We had about 50 breweries closing in Belgium the last two years. That's a part of the past. That's a drama. Some of them were friends. Some of them were making really good beers and they are gone. But the market has to adjust. And we'll have new energy, new brewers coming back to other beers. But we have to work harder to get customers to drink other beers. We lost the war. Ten years ago, I said we cannot lose the war. We lost it. We lost it. The industry won the war. Oh, right. They won it. They are more powerful than ever. Yeah. We were not able to say, to ban them from festival when they took over a craft brewery for the image. We were not able to to find a consistent behavior. It's different things. Abbey InBev, they are brewing 800 million hectoliters a year. Their job is to make money. It has nothing to do with brewing. <coughs> job of a brewery is to brew beer. Job of InBev, Heineken and Carlsberg is to make money. I don't blame them. It's two different jobs. Yeah. I was in, in California when InBev took over uh, Goose Islands. I was here in Brussels when InBev took over a small Italian brewery. A few hours before it became public, I gave a lot of phone calls. I said, OK, let's organize. Let's boycott them. But they were still invited to all the festivals. We mixed craft beer small production with the industry. A beer is a beer. No, a beer is not a beer. There is two different ways to make a beer. You can make it in a couple of days or you can make it in a couple of weeks or months, depending on the style. So at the end now, beer is everywhere and nowhere. So we have to start again and it will come in smaller way smaller festival, be more reasonable, more human, recreate the link between the brewers and with the customers. And at one point, we'll have to say that there is a difference between a chicken and a chicken, bread and bread, meat, meat, tomato, tomato, beer and beer, cider and cider. That's an eloquent way of putting it. Yeah, that's a... But it, we have to come back to the roots. And you're positive that can be done? Not true. <laughs> I'm not sure it can, it can be done. Yeah. This is the path I'm taking. But mm. you're going to try. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I tried to do it the last 20 years. <laughs> At least trying is always here parts. Yeah. It's an important part. Winning the game was not the goal. Playing the game is already an achievement. Is, uh, do you think there will be further fallouts in the Belgian craft market or in family brewers and all that? Or do you think it's <clears throat> gone over the hard part? Or do you think there's more to come? It's more to come. Yeah. Now we are, we are deep in. Yeah. It's, I don't know, I was expecting 18 months from now, 12 to 24 months from now, it's gonna get a little bit better. But prices, economy is cycles. You always have cycle. Growth, fall down, growth, fall down. It's cycles. So we had an amazing almost 40 years of growth in our industry. Now we have a few years to adjust the market. And 
we have to come back and rethink about the business model. Before COVID, you could open a brewery, pee in a can, and it was sold out. That's a fact. That's a fact. You could open a brewery without any low knowledge, uh, pouring oxidated beers in a few days with a nice label, cans. It was sold out. It's over. Now we're going to get back to the brewery having more serious stuff. Yeah, because the ones that last will have gone through that experience and learned a bit, we hope. But is it also that the customers are also getting smarter? They no longer accept pee in a can. The fact is, they are no longer willing to pay an expensive price for pee in a can. So yes, for the pee in the can, but at reasonable price. And, and if you, you can with lactose and, <laughs> and uh, tonka and pineapple. You've always been an advocate and you've always supported and it's one of the few bars that has lambics and gerzes featured and acidic. Uh, is that, that sector of the Belgian uh, brewing scene, it seems still very healthy? Yes and no. Yeah. Um, we still have quite a lot of demand uh, for sour beers, but on the other hand, the numbers of players, uh, by players I mean breweries producing Lambic is way higher. So we cannot count them now with a very small one, the side activity, full time nuance. So we have a lot of players. Uh, we still also have a lot of demand, but people are paying more attention on the price. So, selling bottle at 60, 70, 80 euro a bottle, for me, it's no longer a market. It's still a market for a few hundred thousand people that are the ultra fan of Lambics, but it's no longer a market. That's why also we are working more and more with TAPS. We are working with, we always have at least, I have at least five taps with Lambics yeah. from five different producers here yeah. and six or seven. And probably I will raise the number of taps of Lambic to 10 within a few months, years to have a very large offer for the diversity of the Lambic. But this is also because the name of the bar is not Mudo Lager, <laughs> it's Mudo Lambic and it's a traditional beer. Yeah. So there is, there is a point for me to promote Lambic in Brussels and in Belgium. And there is also a point to have rotating tap or quite often Lambic in another country because it's really specific. Yeah. And Lambic is, for me, the final step. There is, no, there is nothing as complex, as deep as Lambic. You can drink it every day and still learn every day about Lambic. You can drink it hundreds of times and still enjoying the complexity after drinking 10 times, 100 times the same type of beer or the same beer, even from the same producer. So, yeah, Lambic is for me the, the mother of everything else. It's the soul of the beer world and I'm happy it's in my country and within 20 kilometers from my bar. Excellent well thank you Jean for talking to the beer idiots and we uh, we wish a great Brussels beer festival. It's gonna be so a we'll super be nice edition. Yeah we'll be there and we hope to interview some of the brewers there as we normally do. Thank you again for talking. You're welcome. To